Once we have an equation in two variables, one of the very common questions we want to ask is about the slope or the rate of change of the one variable with respect to the other. For example, suppose a business estimates that their benefits cost, C, is related to their number of employees, N, by the equation C equals 328N plus 2,240. How much will adding an extra employee increase their benefits cost? Well, notice that when N goes up by 1, this term will go up by 328, and the 2240 stays the same. That's why adding one extra employee increases their benefits cost by $328. In this context, we see that the slope is the rate of change. So if we're just given an equation that happens to be in point-slope or slope-intercept form, the slope is the rate of change. Sometimes we're given the setup for a problem, and we can calculate the slope without writing down the equation. For example, suppose that a business buys a new computer for $2,800, and they estimate that it will fully depreciate in four years. How much value does it lose each year? We'll say V is the value, T is the number of years, T is our independent variable, and V is our dependent variable. So we can set up a table with the information in this problem. We have values of t and of v, putting t on the left because it's independent. When they've just bought the computer, its value is $2,800. Four years later, its value is zero. Since for this question we're interested in the rate of change, that is, the slope, we want to calculate the slope here which we can do without writing down the equation. If t goes up by 4, v goes down by 2,800, and so the slope is the change in v over the change in t, or negative 700. Answer, how much value does it lose each year? it loses $700 in value each year. Why didn't I say negative? Because the negative is implied by saying that it's losing value. Sometimes, though, we don't have a situation that lends itself to seeing the slope immediately. Sometimes we don't have given information that lends itself to calculating the slope without writing down the equation. For example, suppose Linda makes $15 per hour as a tutor and $6 per hour as a dog walker. She needs to make a total of $225 per week. For each extra hour she works as a tutor, how many hours fewer must she work as a dog walker? Now we can set up an equation relating these quantities. What are our variables? Let's say t is her hours as a tutor and W is her hours as a dog walker. How are we going to get our equation? The amount she makes as a tutor plus the amount she makes as a dog walker will give us her total income. As a tutor, if she works for T hours at $15 per hour, she'll make $15T dollars. As a dog walker, if she works for W hours at $6 per hour, she'll make $6 W dollars. And she wants her total income to be 225 Now, just from that information, neither one of these variables is naturally independent. However, look at this next sentence. For each extra hour she works as a tutor, how many fewer hours must she work as a dog walker? 
That sentence suggests that we're going to adjust the value of t. She's going to work an extra hour as a tutor and see what effect that has on the value of w. That's going to make t our independent variable. We're going to adjust that and find out what effect it has on w. That makes w our dependent variable. To be able to read off the slope, we solve for w. We'll subtract 15t from both sides, and then we'll divide both sides by 6, and we'll get w equals, distributing the division, negative 15 divided by 6 is negative 2.5 and 225 divided by 6 is 37.5. So for every hour she works as a tutor, how many fewer hours must she work as a dog walker? This is the slope when we treat t as our independent variable. So our answer is 2.5 fewer hours.